I'm willing to wager in every game of World of Warcraft Arena that you play, the thing that decides most of your matches is actually positioning, and it matters more than you would ever imagine. Whether that be winning a game because you're in a position yourself to secure crowd control onto a healer, and the enemy DPS is positioned where you can freely land damage, losing because you make the mistake of being out in the middle of the map for too long, and end up getting decimated by a free casting ranged DPS, but even in games where you just had a melee train you from start to finish until you're out of defensives, it can all come down to your positioning. These are all very common situations that we've experienced and will experience hundreds of more times with Arena. Obviously, with positioning being such a large part of WoW Arena, the pro players that we watch on stream are undoubtedly pretty good at it. But how? It's common knowledge that these players play a lot, and you may think that because of this, then they know exactly where to position on every class they play, where to position against every class they face, and where they should be standing on every map. But there are 15 different arena maps, 13 playable classes, and around 30 viable specs that you have the potential of seeing in arena. That means there's an astronomical amount of variance from game to game. So how the hell do these pro players get so good at it? And how do they make it look like they're playing on easy mode? Well, we need a way to simplify positioning in a way that anybody can understand. And that's exactly what this guide is going to do. And while your class, role, or your spec may be different, there's generally only three things you need to figure out to make positioning much, much easier. And we're going to share the secrets that'll make it so you no longer have to play World of Warcraft on hard mode. And by the way, making the complexities of WoW Arena easy is what makes our teaching at skillcap.com so effective. Take our complete class courses. Let's say you play Hunter. As a Skillcap subscriber, you can set the filter and then be met with a course that'll teach you everything you'll ever need to know. The best part of these videos is that they're designed to teach you one concept in less time than it takes for your Arena queue to pop. So while you wait for your next solo shuffle, you can learn everything you need to know to play like a pro and maximize your improvement rate. Sound too good to be true? Well, don't worry. If you don't see a significant improvement when using our service at Skillcapped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to learn more and get the rank that you've always wanted. Back to today's guide. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, should you push in or you just sit back? And this is actually a pretty complex question as some specs inherently prefer to sit back and play passive, while others need to be permanently in the action in order to get pressure rolling, which can cause you to think that as a lot of melee specs sitting back is never even an option, but this is wrong. To answer this question, we're gonna have to figure out the positives and the negatives. So to generalize, pushing in allows you to better accomplish two main goals, easily get damage out on the target you want, while also allowing you to more easily interact with the enemy healer but it comes with the drawbacks of making you a lot more vulnerable when you are targeted, primarily because you're going to have a much harder job trying to avoid it. Whereas, staying back has the positives of making you less of a target as you'll be able to have an easier time in avoiding or retreating from any potential damage. The negatives, however, are that you may not be able to land crowd control or even be able to pressure the target that you're wanting to hit at all times. To explore this further, let's take a look at a low-rated Shadow Priest. Pay attention to his positioning here. Now look at the composition that he's facing. Every one of you should be able to identify that being in the center of the map against two casters that both greatly outpressure you when casting is obviously a huge no-no most of the time. Now compare this to one of the best players in the world, Raikou, who we see here is in a similar matchup against two casters. At first glance, and based on what we know, where he's standing may seem equally as bad, but I can assure you there is one key difference. You know what that is? Take a few seconds to think about it here. Well, paying attention to Raikou's bars, we see that he's got his psychic core, fear, and silence all coming up very soon. So what he does here is cross the map with the goal of using these onto the enemy healer once they're available. Then, for comparison, going back to our low-rated priest here, we can see he has none of his crowd control available, nor is it going to be up anytime soon. So he has absolutely no reason for being here. It's not only crowd control that plays a part in this decision-making, though. 
but its cooldowns in general, and there is definitely a lot more thinking involved in deciding on if you should push in or not. For example, having offensive cooldowns ready or active should make you feel more inclined to push in and play offensive like we see Joe Fernandez doing here. But the key is recognizing that moment when you need to switch gear and identifying when you no longer have that advantage in pressure and should instead stay back and play defensive. Playing around this concept correctly should result in a constant push and pull where you push in during offensive cooldowns, moments of pressure, or times when you have crowd control ready, and then stay back when your opponent has them active. You have limited defensives, or you won't achieve anything by pushing in. Positioning isn't always entirely up to you, though. And of course, if you're a melee in the majority of situations, you are going to be at the mercy of the target you're hitting. Which brings us to the second part of positioning, that being target selection. Surprisingly, target selection is a massive part of positioning, and the two always go hand in hand. In general, identifying good targets to focus in arena is a skill that improves with your game knowledge. And what makes this hard is the sheer amount of variation between classes, specs, compositions, and roles, all of which have the potential to directly then impact or change your target selection and positioning. Take a standard melee cleave, for instance. If you come up against a caster melee healer composition, the majority of the time the caster will be the best target. Respects like Beast Mastery Hunters and Elemental Shamans, who, if up against casters, can, for the most part, safely position near a pillar and push in when needed to land crowd control. So how do you go about simplifying positioning based on target selection? Well, the concept is actually astoundingly easy, and in theory, all it revolves around is hitting the target that allows you to do more damage and more pressure compared to what you're taking strictly based on positioning. For instance, imagine you're in a caster versus caster matchup. Standard positioning near a pillar for both teams is going to be beneficial for obvious reasons, but a common mistake that gets made is that one caster will decide to push into the middle of the map in an attempt to get more damage out, in turn allowing both opposing casters to avoid damage at the pillar but still do their damage for free, making them a clear choice for target selection. Alternatively, a very similar comparison for melee is when casters make the mistake of positioning near pillars and give you a spot you can stand where you can easily hit them but have a very easy way of lining their abilities. Or even if you're a melee up against a melee caster composition. In some situations, when you're required to pull back, what you can look to do is take advantage of the enemy melee following you, and then still get both damage and pressure out while lining, and if you're doing this with your partner, you're essentially creating a 3v1 scenario. Positional mistakes like this, they're incredibly common, especially at lower ranks, meaning if you understand this concept, it's very easy to take advantage of mispositioned opponents. The third and final part of positioning is the most challenging, and that's movement. Unlike in a game of chess, the players you face in arena unfortunately have the ability to move anywhere on the map, and as do you. But the easiest way to learn movement is to pay attention to two main things, that being your healer and the enemy healer. This is because paying attention to a healer's positioning enables you to be able to use positioning as a tool in order to both generate and also relieve pressure. And this one simple concept has created a lot of the positioning terms that we hear thrown around in pro games. For instance, take a melee cleave against caster cleaves. In a lot of situations, the best way for melee to create pressure while still being safe is to hit the closest target. Why we do that is in an attempt to protect your healer, as if enemy casters move away from the pillar and drag you out into the open, you then move out of your healer's safe radius that we see here. And if an enemy caster then steps in that radius, you're going to be at increased risk of pressure, as now your healer is prone to being crowd controlled. How you relieve that pressure as a melee is to then swap and hit the closest caster. Being trained is a nightmare for any caster. We all hate it. But why not learn to use that to your advantage? As getting trained as a caster puts you in the very unique position of using movement to dictate where the enemy will have to be in order to hit you. And just knowing this can allow you to accomplish so much. And all it requires for you to do is simply pay attention to where the enemy healer is positioned. 
Then you use that to move in a way to make it increasingly hard for them to heal the targets hitting you by either dragging them out of range or behind LOS. It's that simple. Doing this not only creates pressure by making it harder for the enemy healer to heal, but also relieves pressure by then making the target have to swap off you if they get low. Movement can honestly accomplish so much, and even in a heavy melee lobby where you would expect it to just be a mosh pit in the middle of the map, you can still heavily use movement to your advantage, doing things like moving over to the enemy healer or grouping up targets to provide you with more cleave damage, easier interrupts, or even crowd control. Of course, we attempt to make WoW Arena and positioning as simple as we can, but you're always going to have to make judgment calls for yourself based on matchups or things that you've never seen before. Inherently, it's just part of the game, and probably one of the most difficult things about improving at WoW PvP. But if we do boil down positioning to these three steps, it gives a very good foundation and will drastically improve your gameplay and make your life a lot easier. And remember, if you found this guide helpful, then you're going to love our service at SkillCap.com. There's amongst thousands of videos on the fundamentals of WoW. You also find commentaries for some of the best players in the world, where they guide you through every decision made and the thought process that goes into it that they take in their games. And the best part? It's completely risk-free to try it out as you're kept safe with the rank up insurance. So if you don't significantly improve while actively using SkillCap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Check us out with the link in the description below and get the rank that you've always wanted this season. All right, guys, that's everything you need in order to stop playing WoW on hard mode. We here at SkillCap want to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next one.